Hey everybody, uh, I recently posted a video called the top three worst things about prison in my experience and today we're going to flip that around and do the top three best things about prison in my experience. But before we get started, if you're new here, I'm Brian, a once trauma ICU RN turned full-time heroin and meth addict, arrested for selling drugs, sentenced to three to 10 years in prison, currently serving out the rest of that sentence on house arrest. This channel is just a way for me to share with you what I'm learning about finding meaning and balance, and I'm applying those lessons to my own life in real time here on the channel as I move along. So welcome. So like I said, in the last video I focused on the negative things about prison, but really when I think back on my year, a little over a year, like 13, 14 months that I was behind the walls, mostly what comes to me are positive things. I actually had a really cool, interesting time in prison. Partly that was because of the fact that it was so novel to me. Before this, I had never been in trouble before. I'd never been arrested before. I'd never spent a night in jail before. So everything about this experience was completely different than anything I'd ever gone through. There's this saying that I came across at some point somewhere that goes, it doesn't have to be fun to be fun. And that always kind of resonated with me. When you think of the difference between like a vacation where you're going on a cruise compared to something like climbing Mount Everest, right? The cruise is relaxing and easy and mindless, um, but something like climbing Mount Everest is very dangerous, it's engaging, it's, it's, it's strenuous, it's scary. But when you come out of those two experiences, like which one is gonna be more valuable, right? So when I look back on my prison experience, it kind of feels like that second one more. It feels to me like the most important vacation that I've ever been on. One thing I definitely want to mention is that the time behind the walls that I'm talking about here is uh, I spent four months in county jail, a month and a half in a place called the fish tank, and then the rest of the time I was in there was at a prison work camp. At every point throughout the whole time I was in there, there was definitely gang stuff going on, there was definitely prison politics stuff going on, there's definitely people getting beaten up and stabbed and, and whatever, but I wasn't in a situation where I was forced to get involved in any of that, you know, it wasn't like I was on a level four yard in California prison, you know, I did my time in Nevada, one, one of my cellmates used to always say, who spent like 10 years in California, that the hardest yards in Nevada are softer than even the county jails in California. So I wasn't in a situation where it was really, you know, I, I, that I had to tip up and get protection and join a gang or anything like that. So even though there was a lot of crazy stuff going on around me a lot of times, I was fortunate that I was in a circumstance where I wasn't forced to get involved in anything that I didn't want to get involved in. I just wanted to say that because my intention isn't to make light of anyone else's prison experience that may have been much more traumatic than mine. One other thing I want to mention real quick before we get started is in the other video, the top three worst things about prison, I said at the end, with my number one worst thing, I said it was also the best thing. That best thing I'm not counting here in this video, so this is a whole new list. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's get started with the number three best thing about prison to me, which is no responsibilities. Can you even think of a time in your life when you had no responsibilities? Even back when you had very few responsibilities, there's still some responsibilities, right? There's, it's just unheard of to get this opportunity to have no responsibilities. The, about half the time that I was in there, I was locked in a tiny cell. And when you're locked in a tiny cell for the vast majority of every day, there's really nothing that you can be responsible for. You're not paying bills, you're not making payments, you're not getting up for work, you're not taking your kids to school, you're not running errands. In fact, when I was in there for the first four months, I hadn't even gotten sentenced yet. So I didn't even know what the future held. So I couldn't even plan for the responsibilities that I might have at some other future point. Now, there are some 
baby responsibilities that you can take on if you're bored enough, basically by volunteering to maybe go help out in the kitchen for a little while each day or sign up for a class so you can go sit in a room with people and talk for, you know, an hour. But mostly you just can sit back and, and be in your cell and, you know, sit on the bed and do nothing and read books and people bring you your food, they bring you your laundry, like there's nothing that you can do. I remember me and my celly Rolo, this guy that I, I spent two months in a cell with, we would sit there sometimes and we would talk about how, you know what, this is, this is kind of like what everybody on the outside is trying to get to. You know, everybody's working so hard so they can get to the part where they can just sit back and have people bring them their food and bring them their laundry and, and they don't have to do anything and bring them all the supplies that they need. <laughs> and, and we're just like, we made it, we did it. <laughs> we're already there, like we're, we're, we're living the dream right now. <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, the reason why this is one of the best things about prison, in my experience, is that it really gave me time to slow down and eliminate all of these things that we have to do all the time in our lives and really get back down to what really matters, which is the relationship that you have with yourself, how you're dealing with yourself. What it really became to me was this once in a lifetime opportunity to cut through all of the worldly responsibilities that I had been drowning in my whole life and start to understand this deeper responsibility to myself to be the, a better version of, of the person that I had been being in the world before that. And you also have this time on all sides, just this infinite amount of time on all sides to just sit with yourself and I started to develop healthy habits that I had struggled to develop my entire life. I started exercising regularly and I've still continued to do that to this day. I developed appreciation for the value of routine and, and consistency and how, how much you can get out of just being consistent. I developed a capacity for discipline that I never had before in my life. This stuff had a lasting effect on me, and now as I'm coming back out into the world and responsibilities are popping up again, I'm kind of able to sense the effect that they're having on me, and I can evaluate you know, which responsibilities, you know, some responsibilities you have to have. Uh, but which responsibilities that I can that are optional and which ones I really want to introduce back into my life is like a main feature of my day-to-day -day life. So I've been really sensitive to that and it's been a really, uh, it was a really transformative uh, growing experience. Number two, best thing about prison in my experience, limited choices. Now, this one kind of has some stuff that bleeds through from the last one, no responsibilities, but I think it's distinct in a lot of ways that are important. We live in a world that is just drowning in choices. There are just endless choices on every level for every little thing. You know, from the movie you want to watch at night to the toothpaste you want to buy or whatever. I think many people consider that a feature, not a bug, of modern life. But there is a vast amount of scientific research that demonstrates that it's having too many choices is actually a hindrance more than it is an asset. The more choices that we have, the less satisfied we are with the choices that we make. And I can attest to this because my experience of having very limited choices while I was in prison and in jail uh, really resurrected my appreciation for the simple things. When you're not being continuously bombarded by superfluous choices all the time, your attention unifies in a way that in and of itself brings a lot of satisfaction. You begin to find joy 
in little things that you had forgotten you could find so much joy in. The choices that you have to make in there each day are so simple. It's like, do you do I want to go uh, write something down or do I want to go learn something from this book or do I want to go over to the other unit and, and talk, hang out with with a friend over there, or do I want to, you know, go to the weight pile and get some exercise? You know, do I want to go get involved in a basketball game that's going on in the gym? When I was at the prison work camp, there was this tiny little library room. There weren't a whole lot of books in there, but there was a good selection. And just walking into that room and looking around at all the books and deciding you know, which adventure or which, you know, topic I wanted to dive into where I could just, you know, pick one of those things and go back to my bunk and just open up this world of, uh, of information or just story or whatever that, that I could just get into and just really, really soak myself in. When a lot of your choices are eliminated, you have the opportunity to really focus in on one thing and hone a skill. There are so many incredible artists in prison that have just taught themselves how to do the most incredible drawings just from the time that they have in there. I lived in a cell with a guy who was just an incredible artist. He had done so much time and he had done a lot of time in solitary confinement and he uh, just made the, these awesome, awesome drawings that he would just sit there and work on. And there was this one time when he was working on all these drawings uh, and, and we would have time to go out of the cell, maybe like an hour or two a day to go into the common room and talk to the other people on the unit. And uh, my birthday was coming up and he was working on these drawings, working on these drawings and we didn't have any commissary money so we couldn't buy anything from the commissary so we couldn't have any extra food or anything but he was working on these drawings and he kept going out at the, at the tier time. And uh, at my birthday, he had hidden all this food that he got that he brought out and he like whipped up out of like honey buns and, and soups and like tortillas and stuff. And he made these crazy wet burritos and, uh, and this crazy peanut butter cake and stuff just out of all this commissary stuff. And I was like, where did you get all this stuff, little boy? And he was like, I just, uh, I went out and I like traded my drawings for, for a commissary and he like collected all this stuff and put it, kept it in his thing and then, uh, and then made this crazy birthday spread for us. It was so cool. That was like maybe the coolest birthday I've ever had. What made it so special is that we were in this, this limited environment but he used the resources that he had through this act of just generosity and, and, and sweetness to make this happen. And, and it felt like a birthday of just overwhelming abundance to me when I was in there. I was recently reading The Happiness Hypothesis by Jonathan Haidt and there's a quote in there that says, quantity undermines the quality of our engagement. And that's certainly true, and I think it captures well what I'm trying to convey here. All right, and the number one best thing about prison, in my experience, is no cell phones. Nobody has a cell phone. I mean, some people have a cell phone, but they don't, like, have it out, you know? <laughs> so... But no one has a cell phone out. No one ever, you never see cell phones. When can you experience this ever else in the world today? There's like nowhere that I can even think of. Like you could go on a retreat maybe somewhere where they take your phone away or something. Like there's no place anywhere that you get to experience this. This is just not a thing that people, people get to experience anymore in the world. And prison is like one of the only places that you can experience a whole community of people who don't have a phone. Now, I know that everybody today knows, in theory, how distracting our phones are and how much time they're taking up and how much they're affecting our connections with other people and blah, 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 blah. But you don't really get to make contact with what that really means until you go back to a place where nobody has one because the effects are profound man the quality of the connections i made with the people i met in prison effortlessly 
was so refreshing. It's not something that I've really experienced in a while. It's incredible what happens to people, whether they realize it or not, when the only people available for them to communicate with and, and give attention to are the people that are actually physically in front of them, that is uh, just huge. We've grown so accustomed to everyone around us all the time just doing this when we're with them that we don't realize how fucking weird it is. We don't remember what it's like to just sit around with our family and friends and loved ones and nobody have the option to look at this thing in their pocket that's trying to get their attention all the time. You know, that, that takes away so much more than it seems like it takes away. This is something that only really became apparent to me after I got out and was back in the world and I just had grown used to having uninterrupted interactions with people, uninterrupted conversations with people. And, and just when I first got out, it was kind of jarring when somebody would do this while they were talking to me. And I was like, ooh, that doesn't feel good. I don't like that. But then so quickly, you know, I got kind of used to it again and I had got a phone again and then I was doing it too and now I'm doing it. And it's not to say that I don't have fulfilling interactions with people now, um, but I just, it was so much more common in there than it tends to be out here. And this is something that I just am highly aware of now. And it's a lesson that I want to remember because I need to remind myself constantly how important it is that I regulate my relationship to my phone. Anyway, all of the things that I've mentioned here, the no responsibilities, limited choices, no phones, they're all kind of elements of the same thing, which is this, that prison gave me the opportunity to really re-examine my life, slow down and re-examine what was important to me and what really matters. And it allowed me to really get in touch with that. I'm trying to bring all of this stuff out from the prison experience into my life and, and start to implement them so I can live in a new, more fulfilling way. At this point, I really just want to spend the rest of my life focusing on living day to day in a way that keeps me well and keeps me you know, happy. My whole prison experience to me was priceless and I, I don't think that that's the way it affects everybody but I think I was just at a place in my life where it really was the best thing that could have happened to me. And I'm so glad that it was something that I went through. Anyway, I think this video has probably gone on a little longer than I expected. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. The song of the week this week is The Only Living Boy in New York by Paul Simon, or Simon and Garfunkel technically. Um, check it out if you're interested. It's a great Paul Simon song. I've been getting a lot more comments lately and I haven't really had a chance to respond to every single one like I usually was. Um, i am just been busy with work and everything and it's and I don't want to stay on my phone too much, you know, just responding to messages. Um, but I really appreciate everybody who's commenting. I'm going to try to go back and get to a lot of them. Um, but thank you guys so much for your support and I appreciate you so much and I will see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.